Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 22 of our point and click adventure series in Unity. So, in our last video, we started creating our collector script and we added it to our red sphere in our scene. Um, we have the collector script here in the scene, however, we are not able to actually see the item that it's going to hold. So, that's one thing that we needed to fix for this to um, really be a functional system. The other issue we have um, is that we don't actually know, we can't see our inventory anywhere, even if we were to add an item to it, we have no feedback, we have no you know, way of tracking what we're holding, if anything. So we're going to look at fixing um, both of those things right now. So the first one, um, to make the item appear here in our um, inspector, we're going to go into Mono Develop to our item, and we're going to add a quick line right before it, and we're going to say that this item is system.serializable. And what this does is basically, it does a number of things. Um, one of the big ones it does is it makes it possible to, for this item to be saved when we, if we wanted to create a save game state. The other thing is that it makes it appear in the, um, in the inspector in Unity editor. So if we jump back to the editor, we should now see this item up here. It's named my item because we had named it um, in our collector, we're calling it my item. And what it does is it creates this, uh, what's called, I believe it's called a property drawer. Um, which then we can open up and any sort of public information we would put into an item now appears here. So let's say we're going to create an item and let's call it gold key. Hit save. And now um, if we were to, let's see something here. Actually, this should work out fine because if we go to our game manager, we should see that item held is here and there is nothing in it right now, but it does exist. So let's go to hit play here. And what should happen is if we go, actually we have to back out of here for a second because we have to activate this scene. If we activate that so that we can now interact with our cube and our sphere, Just going to do that. This is a very uh, poorly constructed level design right now. And now if we click here, and then we click our red sphere, we see that the gold key appears in our items held. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We are, you know, able to interact, and now what's happening is that item is being taken and placed into the item so that now the item name becomes gold key. However, Obviously, if we're playing our game outside of Unity, we're not going to have the benefit of looking in the inspector and going, oh, look, the uh, item is being held there. So we do want to create a some sort of way of tracking if we're holding an item. And the easiest way probably to do that is if we were to create a new game object UI canvas. And this, what this canvas is going to be is, is our actual game UI now. So anything that's like really persistent throughout the game that we would see, um, this would be something like in a you know first person shooter, you might have your health bar, or you know if you're playing a um, platformer, you might have your score and your time left in the level, things like that. Um, in this case, we're gonna be looking at what our inventory is. And so we're going to do that by creating inside of this canvas, a UI text field and we'll make that text white. Make it a little bit bigger. We can make it say 20. And actually take this text and let's focus on it in our scene view. And we can move it say, let's move it to the top left. And then we can just make this a 10. No, it doesn't look right. Oh, that's why, because that's centered. When we do this, we can also, if we hit, if you hit shift, it will also set the pivot. And if you hit alt, it will hold the uh, position as well. So what that will do is it'll actually snap this to the top corner and it makes the pivot now this top corner so that we're basing all of our positioning on the top corner rather than the dead center of the um, object. So now what I can do is I can say 
10 left, or 10 to the right, and 10, negative 10, so it'll go down. So now it's a little bit, there's a little bit of padding there, but we're able to see this text. I'm also going to expand it a little bit because um, depending on how long the name of an item is, it might be uh, too big for the space. So now I'm going to change this text, and I'm going to say item held. Save. And this is basically going to be where we show what we're holding. Um, and for that, we're going to need one more script. And this, let me see here, we don't really have a good UI folder in our scripts. So I'm going to add one. Create folder UI. Double click that. Now I'm going to create a C Sharp script. We're going to call this inventory display. And actually, I'm also going to change the name of this uh, text object to the same thing. Inventory display. So now what we can do is I'm going to jump into this inventory display script. I'm going to add using Unity Engine dot UI because we're going to be using UI elements in this and I'm going to we're going to add this to the actual text box so we don't need to necessarily grab that text we can just say get component text um, we don't need to like manually wire that we can do it as simply as saying text um, display text and then we can add a void awake and here we're going to say get component oops, um, text. That's what we want. There we go. Um, we can also say that we want this to be oh, whoops, display text equals get component text because we want to actually be populating that into our display text variable. We can also say display text dot text equals item held none because at the start of the game we're going to presume that we're not actually holding anything. Now, in our game, we want to make we need some way to actually refer to this inventory display, and we can do that by uh, wiring it to our game manager. So what I'm going to do. Similar to how we have our public IV canvas and our public um, observer camera, I'm going to add a public uh, inventory display and call that invdisp for short. And now what we'll do is we'll go back here, go to our inventory display, add that component to it, there we go. And then in our game manager, where we should now have yeah, inventory display, which is currently none, we are going to drag inventory display into that. And the reason we're doing all of this is so that now, when we click our collector, not only are we going to change the item held to my item, we are going to, in addition, go game manager dot ints dot in display dot text oh um, dot and we're gonna say update display which is a function that we don't that doesn't exist yet but we're going to create it right now and so what this is going to basically do is whenever we say this update display we're going to check what the item held is and populate that into the display so actually we can do that with this too. So for now I'm going to delete this. Um, we're going to create a public function. It's not going to return anything, so public void update display. And basically what it's going to do is say display text dot text equals item held and we're going to add to that game manager dot item held dot item name now actually this is not going to work for us and I can tell you why is because 
when we try to do this at the start of the game, we're not holding anything. So this is actually going to throw a um, error and basically say that there is no object to get item name from. So we can resolve that pretty easily by just, we're going to add one quick thing here. We're going to say string um, display name. And then we're going to say if game manager dot ints dot item held does not equal null then display name equals and we can actually copy or cut and paste this so what we're saying is if there is an item get the items name else if there is no object then display name can simply equal none. And so now what we can do is say instead of instead of getting the item name here, we can simply get display name and add that to the string. Save that. So now what should happen is whenever we update the display, we will find out if there's something being held, if there is get its name, otherwise just say nothing's being held. And we can add that at the very start of our game as well, so that at the start of the game we know we're not holding anything. So we come back here. Right now we don't actually say none because I didn't write that into the um, inventory displays text, but this should, once we hit it, um, once we start the game, show none here. So let's try that out. Let's zoom in, play. And something's not set to an instance. Game manager instance. Oh, that's probably because, yeah, that's because we're um, setting our instance of the game manager here in awake. And we're doing this in awake as well. I'm gonna do this in the start so that we know for sure that this is happening after the game manager sets itself up. A little bit of a gotcha there. I'll hit play. And it's still not updating, which is a little surprising to me, especially because we're not getting an error. I'm wondering if item held can't equal null that even if it's empty, it's still, there's an item there, it's just got an empty string, which is possible. What if I was to go in here and start this off equaling null? Let's try this. The joys of testing out and finding out why something's not working. Nope, that's not working either. Well, let's try something here and let's see where the problem is rooted by going over, click that, zoom out, go back over here. Let's see if this changes once we click on the sphere to actually get the gold key. So I'll click it now, and that does add it there. So that's working. Um, we can get item held gold key. The problem then is simply that when we are, it would seem to me the problem is that when we are checking if item held equals null, it for some reason doesn't. It's equaling just like an empty item. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a little bit of um, investigating into this and hopefully resolve this in the next video. But for now, as you can see, this is pretty much functional for us. We are able to click on a collector, get that item into our item held, which is really going to be useful for things like when we want to That's bizarre. Hmm, all right, that's something funky going on with my display card, I think. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um, now that we have this inventory item that we're able to populate in, we can now start creating, say, a prerequisite to check and make sure that we have the right item before we can do something. And that's really, um, I'm gonna hopefully resolve this issue of the null item held 
as well as we can start getting into prerequisites with items in our next video. So thanks for watching and bearing with me on this one, and I will see you next time.